Hello, my beautiful friends. Welcome to Proper Madness. My name is Savvy, and I give a unique perspective on mental health by providing tools, guidance, and knowledge on how we can better understand ourselves as well as our past and present experiences, and in doing so, we can help heal our mental health. I get to speak with a variety of individuals from around the world as they share their stories from their journey through their mental wellness so that it helps others stand strong and use their voice. Hello everyone, welcome back to Proper Madness. I've been away for a while and the first guest that I get to have on to Proper Madness is a very familiar face. His name is Bryce. You've seen him here before. Um, He's a good friend of mine and it'll be good to have a nice chat and catch up. We both have taken breaks from social media collectively and I'm coming back now. I've already been back and he's on his way. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. That's fun. I feel like it's... just those intros, like I, I would feel so much pressure from it, but you do such a good job. It's just off the top. Oh, really? Oh, good. Yeah. No, it's in, <laughs> it's in my brain and I just kind of go because we both, I think, took some time for ourselves um, to step away from social media and how that can get. Um, I think as any creator or any person who has a business online in some degree, shape or form, you can get really overwhelmed with social media and how you show up. And sometimes you kind of need to retreat a little bit in order to come back and reemerge as a beautiful butterfly. So what made you decide that you wanted to like take a step back and take a break? I feel like social media is just such a fast moving place. Um, I remember where I was creatively when I first started making content, it was more like I was excited to create and go out and like um, post and everything. And like, it was, it was a lot of passion behind it. And then I got to a point where I was doing the same thing over and over again. And it was like, I wasn't really growing as an artist. And I think that's something, at least for me, mm. um, like I'm, I'm a huge novelty seeker. So like, I always love trying new things. I have like 10 different passions going on that like, I'll pick up one thing. And I'll be obsessed with that for a little bit. And then I'll that'll like die down. I'll pick up something else. But um, it just, I feel like I ended up getting into a routine. And I feel like as a creative, just routine can help just lead to a spiral, mm. a creative spiral. So I feel like just taking a little bit of time away, um, it kind of helps you get your mind right of like what direction you want to go in and um, off, outside of social media where other people aren't really around you just creating for you and um, gives you more space to figure out your why because I feel like um, especially with you know the fact of being in a routine you can find comfort in like the first why but I think you need to find a bunch of different whys as you're kind of just like exploring those new things mm. so I feel like with my break that's what I'm trying to embody in a way yeah that's funny that you said that because for me it was similar um because I think as you said right as a creator you can kind of get lost in your art without mm -hmm. really knowing it because you're creating it starts out as like I'm creating because I enjoy it but then once you get into the routine like you said you're, you're kind mm -hmm. of just on autopilot and you're a little bit like a machine yeah. and it doesn't really come across like it still comes across great and probably wonderful in so many ways but then like it's almost like you have to sit down and almost and put on an act in order to then create the content and then mm -hmm. you're you're somehow more exhausted afterwards you're like okay if i have to schedule time to make content then it's not really inspired art like you're you're when you're starting off making content or like you're making content at a certain point you're a you're say like you're person a right like this is your personality right now and then if you stay in a habit, you're eventually going to change and you're not going to resonate with your own content. Yeah. So you kind of have to evolve with your content. And I feel like if, at least what I was doing with like, I was, um, I do a lot of relationship and like self-worth stuff, but I haven't been in a relationship in like two years. So everything that I was doing when I was talking about um, like breakups and stuff like that, that was at the time when I was going through a breakup, that's when I started making that type of content. And then I kept doing it. Mm. So um just like who I am compared to who I was when I first started, it changed. So I feel like my content, not necessarily getting rid of it. Like I'll still make some relationship content. And then like, if I have to do a breakup video or something, oh, no. somebody asks me 
like, hey, can you, what, you, I have a question on this, I'll do that. But yeah. um, I think just tailoring my content to more what stage of life I'm at right now. Mm. Um, Which is how it should be, right? I think because like, yeah. people want to feel involved in your life and more connected to you. So if mm -hmm. you're trying to almost like not fabricate, but come up with things to talk about as opposed to what's going on currently in your reality, mm -hmm. then it's hard for people to relate to you too. And then for you, like you said, for you to for for you to relate to your own content, which is important, you know. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So like, just I feel like I I think it's Gary V or somebody, somebody mm -hmm. big. They talk about instead of just making content, you make you document your life basically. So. Yeah. You just tailor everything to what you're going through, and it's just easy to talk about. Oh man, yeah. Just, hey, I I'm going through a breakup. Let me talk about breakups. Hey, yeah. I'm I'm learning about um, you know, health and fitness. Let me let me do stuff on that, and just like following your passion. So you're basic. I don't want to say you're the niche, but no, but you are. Yeah, yeah, that's actually true. Stop trying to create a niche. You are your niche. The more you create mm -hmm. content around telling your story the more people are going to start to relate to you, which is true. And I think like, yeah. because you're the niche, because your story isn't like everyone else's story. Um, you may have the same sort of skeleton of what people may have, like, you know, like the typical storytelling outline of like the ups and the downs and the, you know, all that. But yeah. it's true. Like we all have are the heroes of our own stories, but they're also different. So like one person could relate to it more than someone else. And that's okay you know so yeah I feel that and it's it's also like even companies they change I don't want to say change their brand um because I don't think your brand is just you know you can your brand can stay consistent but you can change your content mm. um, so you can the way you deliver the way your your content looks um obviously your personality those are things that like they might change a little bit but that's still yeah. your brand compared to like if you're making content on um, just things you're passionate about, that's still your brand. Yeah. Have you had people ask you to make specific content for them? Or like if they have a question, because you mentioned that you said sometimes people ask you to like, hey, can you make a video on this? Yeah. Like um, I know it's easier on, I don't know if Instagram has it, but I know on TikTok you can reply oh, to yeah. comments with a video. Um, so I, I was doing that for a minute where it was like literally just any time any any time I got a question I would make that the topic of the video and it's an easy way to just come up with content ideas um mm -hmm. I used to do it I don't really do it as much now but I might just like just ask some questions and that's smart yeah. yeah like a QA. and a I think Q&As are smart that's something I'm thinking about doing too mm -hmm. um just because like I do get so many questions sometimes and, and I'm like huh I'm like I haven't personally gone through this but I feel like I need to almost fabricate content to make to relate to that but mm -hmm. I think on TikTok it's a little different because you can just reply um when I took my break from uh my platform Instagram was like a problem for me personally for, for so many reasons I think it mm -hmm. was just because like I had so it's interesting that you said that like your brand won't change but like you and your personality will always stay. I had almost kind of like the opposite happen where my, my brand kept changing with mm -hmm. every identity crisis that I had with myself, right? There was like the goth savvy moment that was there. She lived it. Mm -hmm. It was great. The walls were painted black. <laughs> you know, it was really in the darkness, but it was almost as if I was doing it because I wanted to almost protect myself in a very overly overtly exaggerated way. Because mm -hmm. um, I, I was so scared of feeling so soft and feminine that I went, oh, like no one's going to take me seriously if I'm soft and feminine. So I'm going to come across like a total badass and be really abrasive and super dark. And mm -hmm. <laughs> but, as, but I mean, it worked for a little bit, but I found that I I fully had to go get dressed in clothes that I wouldn't normally wear every day and then come sit down and film and kind of put on an act. And then what's even more interesting is subconsciously, like say I was in a good mood. I don't know any goth, edgy person that's like happy. So if I was like in a great <laughs> mood, it's almost like subconsciously I do or say something in my life to like 
bring myself down so that I had something to say. And mm-hmm. then I'd have like those softer moments where I felt more myself. And I tried to make it more personable, but then like it just didn't perform as well mm-hmm. because it didn't go with the brand. So then myself had to change again. And it was, yeah, it's like a vicious cycle in that way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know, especially with all the different algorithm changes and stuff like that, too. They have, yeah. I think right now it's like you have to post five times a week or like every day or something like that. It's something crazy. Yeah. Um, so a lot of people, I feel like, I know a lot of creators are feeling the same way where it's just you're you have, you get addicted to mm. social media. Um, yeah. So it's it's something they have to be conscious about. And um, if you're not, it's it's so easy to just start doom scrolling and mm-hmm. be stuck scrolling for hours and scrolling and like comparing yourself to other people. Mm-hmm. Um, that was my biggest thing. And I. I think I had announced like on my page before I left, I was like, so I'm like, I won't be on Instagram. I was on like my personal one, you know, cause mm-hmm. I was just living my life and being more normal. Um, meaning like not trying to be someone I'm not, not being so conscious of like what I'm posting and how it's coming across to like, mm-hmm. however many people are following me. And then TikTok is a little bit more in, within my control. Cause that, whatever you stop on is what you're going to get more of. So you have more control of what you're going to see and what you're not going to see. Whereas mm-hmm. on Instagram, it's a little different. You have the power to like almost be your own detective within your own mind for so many different random out of pocket things, right? Mm-hmm. Like if you're a coach and you're not doing so well, you're going to start looking up other coaches to see what they're doing and then try to copy them. And then you just get farther and farther away from yourself. No, I feel like, I feel like it's definitely important to be taking boundaries when it comes to social media. Mm. Um, yeah. Cause you could just get stuck in like a loop of just, yeah. Just feeling stuck basically. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You feel stuck feeling stuck. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, do you set like boundaries for yourself with social media in any way? Like I know, some people like have it time out on their phone. You can do that. Like you can time out certain mm-hmm. apps on your phone. I tried it. And then I also tried the one where it's like you turn your whole phone black and white. So it's oh. not as interesting. And I hated it. Um, so <laughs> what I do is like a reward system. No, and I even do with food where if I, if I end up finishing what I need to get finished, I'll be like, I'll give you some time on it. Yeah. But I have to put my phone in basically another room and like do my work and all that because it gets bad it's mm-hmm. it's like social media is a, a toxic relationship in a way where it's like you say if it's somebody that they'll give you attention and then they'll just stop giving you attention yeah it's the same thing with social media where yeah. you'll the algorithms of algorithms will pick you up and then they'll just kind of like you'll have slower seasons mm-hmm. and it's just the natural flow of like you're high at one point and then you hit a low and they mm-hmm. keep going high to low. And I think it's called like fractionation or something like that. That's interesting. That's kind of cool. Um, it's basically the the psychology behind like if you're on a high and a low, you're going to get addicted to it. You get addicted to the high highs and the low lows that you always just want to stay high. Mm-hmm. So the second you go low, it's almost like you're like crawling up this like huge mountain just to get back up to that top again. Mm-hmm. Um, and the way you describe the highs and lows makes sense to me though now because I noticed when I came back to Instagram, um, like all of a sudden, like one post of myself, nothing prominent, just me in the mirror on the way to the hospital. <laughs> mm-hmm. Like that's all. That's all it was. Like very innocent photo, and that did abnormally more well than usual, you know. And and so like I. I kind of stopped and go, huh, maybe it's because I haven't posted in a while. And then I posted something else again, like a quote, and that performed even higher. And I was like, mm. this is kind of weird. Um, and, then, and then again, I posted something else and I went, oh, that didn't get as many. And so your mind already starts to go, wait, why mm. didn't that reach? Or like, why didn't that hit? And it can get very, very dangerous. Yeah, I think they actually do notifications. If you haven't posted in a minute, they tell your followers like, hey, this person just posted for the first time in a while. And it's creepy. (laughs) So since you've been, I sound like Kelly Clarkson, since you've been gone from your social media, um, 
Wow, my brain's really everywhere this morning. <laughs> since you've since you've left social media, what have you been doing? Like, have you was there anything else that like you want to dive more into while you were away, or was it more just like taking time for yourself? Um, a little bit of both. Um, I've definitely been wanting to take more time for myself. Um, I know I used to have a thing where it's like I needed to get a get up at like nine to plan out this content or um plan it out for an hour record it and then like have it out by 12 and that used to be like my routine all the time um but now it's like I just want to wake up and have some tea and like chill in the mornings and just mm -hmm. have a slow morning and then um I've been writing a journal so like I ended up making a free journal oh, cool. um and I finished that and now I'm actually doing the full thing. So like it was only a seven day journal and now I'm doing a 30 day journal, but the seven day journal was like 40 pages. Oh. <laughs> so this one's about to be crazy. That's um, awesome though. But um, that's basically what I've been, what I've been up to just doing that. Um, I work, I've been doing like live production. So like concerts and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I've helped build stages for that. And that's cool. Have you like, yeah. have you gotten to see any of like, favorite artists that you've wanted to see not necessarily the the um the people that i'm a huge fan of but there was um luke combs he, he was a concert in tampa um pitbull he was he was one a couple of weeks ago and then and i'm on the drake concert and so i'm excited for that one that's cool in, that's in really February. cool yeah, so I'm looking forward to that one, and then um, pretty much just doing that and like smaller gigs mm -hmm. and all that. So, oh, that's really cool. Mm -hmm. Do you um, is that something that like you just, I mean, because you went to school for film, right? So is that mm -hmm. something that you kind of want to start doing is be more in that industry, or just you just want to stay with? It's just something you enjoy. That's like that's fun for you. It was more something that because there was a whole strike going on in the film industry, yeah. it was more it just my friend worked in live productions. He was like, hey, you want to just try this out? And I tried it and been doing it ever since. That's um, really cool. So yeah, it's pretty cool. Oh, yeah. This, I think that's when like the best things come around, right? When you're just like, all right, this isn't what I would normally do, but let me just try and like see where mm -hmm. it goes. Learn uh, a whole bunch of new things and just yeah. expand it. Oh, that's, be that's, that's really cool. I like that. Yeah, I say it all the time. It's it's crazy thinking about the fact that pretty much all art is connected in some way. So mm. um, I'm finding out like a lot of the equipment for film, I'm, I'm not a lot of it, but like some of it's the same. It just has a different name. Mm. And um, so it took me a minute to figure out what people were saying when they're saying like, hey, can you grab this for me? And like, I'd, I'd be like, what the hell is that? And then they, they <laughs> show it to me. And I'm like, oh, this is what it is. Like, it's a completely different name. <laughs> and, um, but even then, like film and photography, they're basically the same. Um, painting, like a lot of cinematographers, they are also painters just because you mm. get the colors and like you mix the colors and you can do that with light too. So literally everything is connected in some way. And it's more, the more you branch out mm. in art, the more you can kind of just like, become more of a well-rounded artist and take everything and put it into your art and it's it's really cool no that's so true actually that you say that it's kind of interesting because um I uh, the company I work at now that I'm leaving it's in sales and mm. for a long time I was like how the hell why can't I translate sales to my own platform I'm like mm. I couldn't relate the language to each other yeah. um and then I started taking this really cool. Have you heard of Masterclass? I'm sure you have. Yeah. So I started, I was like, all right, I'm going to try Masterclass because I see ads for it everywhere. And so I decided to just do it. And I started taking this course with Daniel Pink on sales and negotiation. And mm -hmm. so when I first started, I was like, okay, I'm just going to learn about sales. But the way he started explaining all these little nuance, like definitions and your target audience and communication and how you come across and what customers mm -hmm. are thinking of it helped me understand actually like what your audience is thinking of and how you can tell a story and how that can be conveyed and how mm -hmm. your your audience can pick up on that and so it was the same thing that you said but I translated it the sales part into my art and how I come across and like 
So now I think in one of his, um, in one of the courses, he was like, I have this teeny tiny chair sitting on my desk. So I got this teeny tiny chair sitting on my desk to always think about my audience. So anytime creating any sort of content, I look mm. at that little chair. I feel like I should go grab the chair. I, <laughs> I look at the little chair and um, I think, okay, I'm creating this content with this in mind, but how are people going to perceive it? And mm. what are they going to get from it? I, I never like to, I never like to go with, I want my audience to get this from it because I think it's very, art is very subjective. Your audience mm -hmm. should just get it, get whatever they do get from it. But I have to have some sort of actual intention of what's the overall message here and how is this going to be conveyed? Yeah. Um, it's like the same with communication too. So yeah, I've had to do the same thing, but in different, in different ways, which is interesting. Yeah, it's, it's 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 weird just if you think about it literally everything you can connect everything you just have to figure out the connection points and all that and what's i think that makes me think about relationships and dating though too because i feel like a lot of people so what i've been learning is opposites mm -hmm. can very much attract if you find a connection and mm -hmm. some form of chronic like common ground i feel like in the past, there have definitely been people that like, I've like, oh, we don't have anything in common. There's no way to connect. But if you actually try and try to find some, I mean, to some extent, sometimes people just don't get along. Um, but, if you, but if you actually try, you can start to see kind of the connections with certain things, even in the in the relationships in your life. Mm -hmm. um, like I was, I very much used to be introverted and a hermit and like not talk to anyone, not really have many, like many friends because I always had this idea, existential idea of no one gets me. Um, but like no one will get you if you just keep to yourself and you don't actually yeah. try to find a connection. And I think that's the same with everything. Yeah, I think the quote is, uh, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. Mm. And I, that's something I've been trying to embody more. It's like, I'm the same way. I'm a huge introvert. Yeah. Um, and a lot of times my friends would be like, hey, you want to go out tonight? And I'll be my first response is like, when am I getting back to my bed? <laughs> <laughs> if it, if it's a I don't know, I'm like, ah, you know, let me let me think about that. Yeah. But, um, no, I, I definitely feel that with connection is pretty much everything. And it's it's um, studies show it, too. It's like it, it, it can lead to a longer lifespan and everything. And um, it's just we're social creatures. We, we need connection yeah um and i think like especially as introverts it can be tough to do that mm -hmm. it can be tough to be like okay let me connect to another person i've been trying to um i know like personality types and energy types are very very different so like you can have the personality of an extrovert but then like energetically mm -hmm. you're, you're an introvert as introverted people you have to monitor like your your energy expenditure, expenditure, mm -hmm. um, which can be hard because like you want to connect to all the people in your life, but at the same time, you only have so much bandwidth to do that. Yeah. I know for me, I, I personally, I used to try to be, try to push past my so social barrier. Like once my battery is done, I'm trying to like go a little bit further than that. Mm -hmm. But one thing I realized is like, this is who I am. I'm not going to really try to change who yeah. I am I'll obviously be there around the people that I love and you know they understand that I'm an introvert and they they fully accept me as an introvert yeah. at this point um and they know like once I'm at that point I'll be super social once I'm like out and I'm like talking to people once my social battery is done I'm literally just like chilling in the corner yeah and, um I don't know. It's just something that I I've started to accept even more, especially the more that I've um with like growing up with social anxiety and stuff like that. I used to be super hard on myself, mm -hmm. and now it's something that I'm more accepting to. Where if I start feeling drained, I need to kind of like separate myself to get recharged. I'm not really. I don't know. I'm just I'm just okay with taking a step back. Mm. And everything. Did it take you like a long time to come? To terms of like accepting that and being like okay it's okay for me to like take yeah. time for myself yeah 100 percent. it's weird too because you were saying about like um like interview and outer you 
Mm. there you can have different contradictions too and that's something that I learned so like when I had social anxiety and I was having a hard time talking to people um I knew that like on the outside I mean on the inside too um there was a part of me that kind of just wanted to be small and not be seen but there was also a part of me at the same exact time that wanted to be seen by everybody yeah and it's a matter of just letting all parts of yourself live and I think that's something we learn in meditation too is just look at everything without judgment Mm. and that's something that you know it it took 10 years at least it's it's something that it it's healing just takes a long time and it's slow sometimes and sometimes it's fast but yeah um, it's something that I think it took a long time to to get to this point but I wouldn't really want it to be any faster just because I know I'm still changing I'm going to be some somebody new in five years I'm going to be somebody different in 10 years from who I was five years ago. So it's it's something that I'm just, I'm not trying to change anything at this point. I'm just open-minded to whatever happens. Yeah, that's, well, that's, I think that's how it should be. There can't, there can be so much pressure, I think, on trying to show up as a certain version of ourselves with like everyone in our lives. And that's very unrealistic. Like if, I think the biggest thing that I've, I've been learning too is like it's okay to be seen but it's Mm -hmm. it's also okay to be seen and take time for yourself and you said that too but like in your in your own words it's kind of funny though like the people who who fear being seen are almost the ones who kind of crave it the most Mm -hmm. Uh, I think because we just we want to feel understood and like someone just kind of like people kind of get us yeah Uh, which is uh, still so contradictory to me because introverts like it's tough for you to like allow people to get to know you because mm-hmm. um, you're almost so closed off. You're like, oh, I don't, I want you to get me, but like, I'm kind of scared. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Um, so I get that. I, I definitely get that. Yeah. I was having a conversation with um, one of my cousins and we were talking about basically our, our authentic selves. Mm. And um, I'm actually putting this in, in my journal too. It's an idea, but I haven't put it down, but it's, um, our authentic selves versus our ideal selves. And a lot of times we're so hung up on our ideal selves. So um, for me, my ideal self has always been, or pretty much your perfect self um, has always been, I want to be super grounded. I want to be super outgoing. I want to be, well, not super, but like, I want to be able to just like walk into any room and have a conversation with anybody. Mm. Um, And this is the person to strive for, but this isn't exactly a hundred percent who I am authentically. And then talking about just the different parts of ourselves that are contradicting. So like your authentic self is who you are when you're around your family, but it's also if you're shy around other people that you don't know. Yeah. Your authentic self isn't just like this ideal self, which is what I think a lot of people get mixed up with, but it's everything about mm-hmm. you. And a lot of people, they're just hard on their authentic selves without realizing like you're everything. You're all these contradicting things. And you kind of just have to see it as it is, which is just, you know, without judgment. Oh my gosh. I feel like you're like speaking to my subconscious because I've had, <laughs> I've had, well, I've had like a very interesting. So for me, I learned the most about myself through uh, dating and relationships and other people. And much of that has actually been like recently, like I think the last like three weeks, the lesson for me, like mentally and emotionally, has been just be your authentic self don't try to be like a certain version of yourself to try to get someone to like like you more it's Mm -hmm. okay for you to take up space like even these parts of yourselves that you that you think is like ugly or too much or whatever like the right people in your life will just see it accept it Mm -hmm. and love you anyways and that's okay um i've had this like anxiety of like i don't want to be too much or Mm -hmm. Oh my God, I have like a lot of anxiety around past relationships. <laughs> and so like I'll get in my head and I'll, I'll overthink. Mm-hmm. Um, and I've been learning recently that the more myself I've been, like I'll like show up like myself and then I'll freak out and go, <laughs> I'll go oh no. And then kind of spiral. And then the other person would actually act like a normal bloody person. And I'm like, oh. Okay, so being myself is normal, but I've been struggling with like my ideal self versus my authentic self. Mm -hmm. Um, And there's so many different facets to it. I think like when you're faced with someone or something that you really like, it's really easy to put a lot of pressure on yourself and go, 
okay, I want to show up as my ideal self because I know that that's what's going to get me to like, I don't know, into a relationship or commitment, whatever you're mm -hmm. striving for in some way. And I think ideal selves can be largely built like based off of, unfortunately, social media, right? To bring mm -hmm. it back around because you see so much information about like, you have to be this way in order to get the opposite sex like you. You have to be this way. You can't do this. You can't do that. And that mm -hmm. can like deteriorate who you actually are. So it's kind of mm -hmm. like, just be you. And if the person accepts you for you, if they have a problem with anything that you're doing, they need to be an adult and like say something. Mm -hmm. You can't just like eggshell, you know, walk on eggshells like all the time. It's exhausting. So yeah, it's like um, we all basically, to some degree, we want to be seen. Um, and a lot of people, they perform basically in order to be seen. And I mm -hmm. think that even then, like, I think depending on your past and everything, because this is something that I've been, I've been learning about myself is even the parts of me that are performing is still my authentic self um, in a way, because mm -hmm. it's, it's something that I learned in order to basically survive. I had to, you know, be a certain way and mold myself. And obviously it's, it's a, a thing that I have to, um, in order to like heal, I'd have to heal that. Yeah. Um, but it's still something that like authentically my body goes into like this reaction state where like I need to, um, yeah. you know, feel the need to perform. And then I, I notice I'm like, wait, I'm performing. I need to go back to this version of me, but it's still all me authentically. It's just, I think me personally, like I've had a lot of um, like the, the part of me that's kind of just like calm. And then the part of me that tries to perform they always fight each other mm. and I've, I've always had a hard time with it but I think one thing that I'm definitely trying to um trying to embody with this social media break is kind of just like merging the two or just being accepting of both of them is like you're over here you're over here and I'm trying to just like accept you guys as over here I'm not trying to bring you guys together yeah type, but I don't know there's just a lot of introspection on it like literally everything if you think about it is your authentic self it's just you have to just get rid of the judgment. And that's something that it's, it's really hard. It's something that I've been, I've been working on. Um, yeah. Well, judgment, I think like I did this meditation this morning on um, the open app on mm -hmm. attachment. Cause like I spiraled last night. We talked before this, I had my company Christmas party. Mm -hmm. Sadie had some tequila. It's she spiraled. Tequila. <laughs> it was she the angry, small, angry girl, you know, just my emotions got the best of me after looking at something on social media. So then I stopped and I was like, okay, I need to take a step back and meditate. And so when I did, I did something on attachment and it was exactly what you said, which was observe and, and feel without judgment. Mm -hmm. And that's, and that's huge. I think like, I think we like to judge how we're feeling because we kind of want to or I know personally, like I like to judge how I'm feeling because I want to pick it apart and figure it out and mm -hmm. analyze it. And, and I want to get down to the bottom of it. But I think in doing that, you don't get down to the bottom of it. You're just putting mm -hmm. like more on top of it. And then you, you don't really understand yourself or whatever you're judging anymore. You just, it yeah. just makes it more confusing. Yeah. I know. Um, that's why I love the idea of just somatic therapy because it's, you're, you're, brain you always try to pick everything apart mm. and, and um in somatic therapy it's like yeah you can think about all these things but what are you feeling and then the moment you think about what you're feeling you just break down it's like oh wait you start panicking but <laughs> That's um true, yeah it's it's like thinking about things isn't necessarily healing it it's just brain making you aware of it and i think awareness is the first step to a problem and then you have to add the feeling part which i think what you yeah. said is is very important uh, there's a there's a meditation because you're talking about meditation too there's a meditation that I basically taught myself in like COVID times oh nice and it was I called it the the release meditation where I would just sit there and breathe for like I would literally just count to 100 100 breaths hmm. and after 100 breaths I think about like anything that happened to me that I feel like I haven't healed from and so like say if it was um like around that time I was going through a breakup. So like, if I was thinking about my relationship, I would think about it and like whatever feelings came up, I'll just let myself feel it. And um, then after 
maybe like 20, 30 minutes of just feeling it, I just reflect on it again. And I feel 20 times lighter. And I, that's why I call it the release meditation. Mm. But um, yeah, I think it, it's what you what we were saying about like awareness and then feeling, and then we can just partner it up with more awareness at the end. It's just like a whole overall experience of feelings yeah. and thoughts, and literally everything. Yeah, I think it's, um, I don't know, there's beauty in it if you allow there to be beauty in it because, like, mm -hmm. it's so messy when you do fall into those emotions and you do feel the things that you don't want to feel. But at the mm -hmm. same time, like you said, you do feel lighter afterwards and that's the beauty in it, right? Like, mm -hmm. I've been, something I've been learning from my time away is do what feels good, not what looks good. Because what looks good isn't always going to be what feels good but what feels good what feels good is what looks good strangely enough right um that's a word yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's um it's interesting how that happens because when you're doing something based off of a feeling as opposed to doing something based off of like how it's going to be perceived or how it's going to be taken mm -hmm. um it has totally different energy behind it like everything is energy um including like when you text or talk to someone you can you can pick up if someone's upset with you just in the energy mm. behind that text because you know you're like oh, okay something's weird here they may not say it but that's all it's all energy in the most uh and for the most part um but where i was going with that was where's was i going with it it was something profound who knows but um you're gonna think about it in like five hours. Probably he's probably and gonna come back. Like, I remember what it is. <laughs> I remember there was a time when I was I was doing a um I think I was doing a podcast and there was something that I completely forgot what I was about to say. Yeah. And I was like, literally the second that I get off of this, I know I'm gonna remember what it <laughs> is. And not even lying, the second that I press end call, I remembered and I DM them and I was like, This is what it is. But it was <laughs> it was bad. I was trying to remember it for a good 15 minutes. It was I was I was thinking about it, I was like this is exactly what I'm thinking of but I can't say it right now uh -huh. and then the second that I stopped um talking to this person it just came up oh that's my life it's like my dad and I call it Murphy's law mm -hmm. <laughs> like we we make fun of each other we're like we're like the king king and queen of Murphy's law it's like as soon as you want something to happen, it doesn't happen. As soon as you don't want it to happen, it happens. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing with like remembering things for me, but I have like a little bit of ADHD. And I think when I have conversations with people, like I'll get so inspired by something that they say that I just take mm -hmm. it. That's what happens to me all the time. I, I made a habit of whenever I'm talking to people and it's like on Zoom or something, I have a little notepad mm -hmm. and I'll, I'll write it down. Like if they, if they say something really cool that I want to go back to, I write it down because I'm going to forget what it is if if I like because usually like when people are talking and like something good pops up if I don't write it down and they're talking for another minute I'm going to completely yeah. forget about it so or if it's like if I'm talking about something I'll have to look down at what it is to see what I was originally talking to so I can loop back because if I don't it's just it it's, just it's goes over from I'll just go this way and I'll, I won't turn back no no but sometimes actually really cool things happen when that does happen Mm -hmm. And you're like, okay, I guess I'm just going to roll with it. That's okay. I think it makes for more interesting conversations. Could you imagine like people who are having very structured conversations? I feel like it'd be very serious all the time. And then I was like, no yeah, person. You need a little razzle dazzle. every now and then. A, You like, need hey, some razzle about, dazzle. What about these elephants over here? Let me, let me talk about <laughs> these elephants for two seconds. Oh, good. Yes. Let's talk about the lamp behind you because it's so interesting. Oh, okay. Sounds good. I have it on a dimmer. Um, Do you actually, is that like a dimmer lamp? Is that what that is? Yeah, I had to get the light bulb, but I have the little switch that I literally just... That's it. actually kind of cool. I actually, I'll be honest. It's only now 10 I'm bucks too, so... Okay. Um, before we started recording, Bryce was trying to teach me about like proper lighting with film and all the things. And when he did, I started to get very inspired, but then I looked behind me and I was like, my... Like, this wall is still black, and there's nothing I can do about that. But then he was like, no, point the light up to your ceiling. And now, guys, I'm going to have some great lighting for all my videos. Well, look out for the tea times. It looks good. Though. Like, your your camera and everything, like, oh, the light behind you. you got a little backlight. I have, yeah. I wanted to do, like, a little practical because I feel like it kind of adds 
some cool like little mood lighting mm-hmm. and I, i'm kind of into that i think like it kind of makes it a little bit more like cozy i'm going mm-hmm. for a cozy vibe not dark and scary anymore so when you do come back to social media do you think you're gonna have like a a different approach of how you're gonna start doing things um like new i don't know like new boundaries you're gonna set for yourself or how you're gonna structure things or stro- uh, no, as far structure. as boundaries i think i'm gonna be i'm gonna try to get back to the way that i was doing it when i first started doing it where it was more I was creating more for myself when I first started and I was just going off of my passions and like, this is a, an approach that I really like that I want to try out. And it started working. And then um, I want to start doing more of that. And then um, just the approach of how I do things, I want to do more, more of like a cinematic mm. way of doing it. So like more short films or like short, short films since the social media. Yeah. And, um just getting ideas out creatively. I want to start doing maybe like YouTube, my podcast. I want to start doing more of that because I haven't posted an episode since like July. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, okay. But I want to start doing more like interviews for that too. Mm. So just a little bit of everything and um, obviously still keeping the, I don't want to abandon what I've been doing a hundred percent. I want to mm-hmm. keep doing that, but I also want to add more um, to that just the approach of everything that's good i think that's yeah you've talked about youtube i think a couple times when i've talked to you you're like i'm gonna get back to youtube and i was like oh you never did (laughs) no (laughs) no i mean i wasn't like well yeah i'm very direct but no i um i always thought about that too i was always kind of waiting to see when you're gonna post stuff about youtube Mm -hmm. um in the background and then i saw the journal and i thought that that was really really cool um Mm -hmm. but i think a more cinematic approach especially like with the way that you film things would be really cool Mm -hmm. um i'd like to see like what kind of messages you have to get out there are you gonna do um like more solo type of cinematic stuff you're gonna include like other people like Um, on your short not sure yet i know at least right now i'll do more solo stuff and then Mm -hmm. i have some ideas um where it'll be like for my first youtube video i have a a full plan for that one it's basically just talking about um how i feel like it's it's weird setting up a camera just to like pretend that you're waking up just Mm. to show people that you're waking up so like it's basically just a, a whole comedy thing on that where it's like um i'm i i like being in the moment and i feel like that type of stuff kind of like takes you out of the moment even though like it's it's definitely necessary as a filmmaker like a creative or anything you need to do stuff like that but it's also it feels weird especially if you're not used to it yeah so um it'll be cool just doing that as my first one and then maybe in like five years looking back on it like wow this is no this is my new normal now (laughs) and at one point it was it was completely weird that's funny no i like that i when i filmed my um my lyrics of the mind ad for the journal i had to film myself waking up and it was the weirdest thing because like I set up the camera and I was like, okay, well, I got I to gotta, I gotta be laying down correctly to make it look like I'm actually mm-hmm. waking up. But it's not realistic at all because the way that I sleep is I have mouth tape on. I, mm-hmm. wear, I wear a blindfold. The reality of me waking up is not so glamorous. It's more like yeah. tearing off mouth tape, not knowing where I am for like 10 minutes and then getting up and, <laughs> and doing that. I would say since you you said you're coming back from social media, like what's one thing that you wanna do differently or like what are you keeping or Oh um, yeah, I didn't your approach on everything. Oh, my approach is incredibly different. I think I I learned my lesson last night with my tequila fiasco a little bit. Um with first and foremost keeping some boundaries as far as how how often I'm gonna be on Instagram itself. Um and what I'm looking at and who I'm talking to, I'll probably just start like when I post things, I'm just going to log it out of the app like right away. I'm not going to sit there and like count the things mm-hmm. or like see who's liking what. So that's the first thing. It's a very minor, minor detail in regards to my habit with social media. Second thing is I'm probably going to be starting to post more videos on TikTok um, just because mm-hmm. for some reason I feel more safe being myself there. I don't yeah. know why that is. Um, I think it's just because there's not a lot of people 
that I really know know on there that follow me. So there's less pressure. Yeah. Which is that's what I felt when I first started posting on Instagram is there's just so many so much pressure because everybody knew me. Yeah. It's weird. It's like when you when you're doing something and you know that like the people you know are watching you, you almost feel like this um like internal pressure to sh- to show up in a certain way like we were talking about. So mm-hmm. when that's taken away from you, then you can kind of be your authentic self, which is just so backwards, yeah. but yeah. So that that's probably like in regards to social media, that's probably like what I'm going to do and then um I'm not going to be a coach anymore. That's something that like I took on being a coach because I thought it was the thing to do. And Mm -hmm. a lot of people were suggesting, hey, like you should have a more hands-on approach to helping other people and mental health. And there are just so many tricky layers to that because there's so many legalities to it. Um, Making the time to like, not that I didn't enjoy, I definitely enjoyed the clients that I did have. And it was very rewarding for me, like mentally and emotionally to make an impact on people in some way. And -hmm. there's still a few clients of mine that like, still reach out to me and like they're doing so well and that makes me happy that like I helped them for that long and they can do things on their own Mm. Uh, but at the same time I almost felt like I couldn't make art and I had to commit to being a coach Mm. as opposed to doing something I enjoy which is like sitting down and talking to people that inspire me and that matter to me Mm. and then inspiring other people um yeah. and having normal conversations that like not everything has to be so deep and heavy and about mental health all the time it can be normal conversations like what we're having today um and you can still benefit from that right like someone can listen to this and be like damn <laughs> social media is really ruining my mental and emotional like well-being and i'm not showing up as myself and that can help them in whatever way that they need to and it's a domino mm-hmm. effect and yeah. you can take it from there um, and then I'll probably start leaning more on my tea times because I really enjoyed making those. Um, I just love making things that like inspire me and make me happy and like fill my soul up with joy. And that was like the one piece of content that like I came up with and I was like, oh, I love doing this. Mm-hmm. I'm like, I love music. I have like my little things that like I'm talking about that people can learn from. Mm-hmm. I like before when I traveled all summer, it was cool to do that and like post it, but I hated having like my family, like posting stuff of my own family on social media. And it yeah. ma- it didn't make me feel good. I'm like, I don't like that. Like, I don't like that my family is being exposed to like people that I don't know. I'd rather save those really special moments and like funny moments for like people that like I'm really close to that can see that, that I, not that I don't trust like the world, but like at the same time, social media is just like when you put your personal life out there, it can make things really ugly and sticky. Yeah, I haven't posted anybody from my family or pretty much anything about my life, like maybe in like stories or something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, but I feel like it would be intimidating just doing it. It's weird. Like, it's, it's, weird. it's funny, too, because my dad, he lives in Jersey and he lives right across from New York City. So he could just take a ferry over. Mm -hmm. and all the time he ends up my dad's like super social all the time he'll go out at night and like he'll meet new people and he'll be like hey this is my son like he'll talk to them but like I feel like he would love it where if I was ever to like post something and like people Mm -hmm. were you know following him and everything he would love it but I feel like it would be weird for everybody else where yeah um just like random people coming up to you like hey you you know this person like I I saw you from this be, yeah you have to like weird. think about like if you have a social media or any sort of online presence like what you put out there is what the world's gonna see if you tr- like when you become famous or have any sort of fame in any way it kind of takes away from almost this privacy of your life unless you're really good and careful about it like you are um mm-hmm. because suddenly people just like see you on a pedestal and they want to know everything about you and they want to get to know you and they want to know about your life and they want to know like all the ins and outs and it's a little creepy and weird like I had um I have a couple followers that like I had to set some boundaries with where I was like like they were talking to me like they knew me and they Mm -hmm. wanted to like get to know me personally I was like I don't like I know I'm online and like I share stuff about my life but like you don't actually know me yeah I'm not 
like it may seem that's what what sucks with social media is like you think you really know someone based off of pictures and videos and like what they're posting but like mm-hmm. you don't know them in real life you don't know all like the little sides to them you don't you haven't really like spent time with them like outside of or like even had a conversation with them so it's like you don't you don't really ever know someone and it's almost like social media fabricates these stories of mm-hmm. who people are yeah exactly and it, it gets really really dangerous really fast so mm-hmm. i feel that i know with me i i uh usually when people i meet people and they ask for my instagram i usually just give them my photography one <laughs> i don't ever give them like my main one um, <laughs> and sometimes if i like i i usually keep a low profile with mm-hmm. doing everything i like just Same. vibing to myself and um like if i hang out with people i like just chilling the entire time but um if i ever meet somebody and i give them my instagram and like they end up finding my other one and um like sometimes people will be like oh yeah i've seen your videos before that's crazy and like mm. I'm like yeah that's cool like that's fine it's yeah like, yeah but that's like you know i'm still healing everything. yeah i'm still a human <laughs> i'm still a person like, yeah. outside of that yeah that's i do the same thing like when i um like when i'm getting to know people or like like i have like I've, I've made a bunch of new friends like within um like a certain community that i'm involved in and i didn't give them my podcast i didn't even mention mm-hmm. it and so mentally i was like you know if you find it on your own that's on yeah. me but like i'm not gonna go out of my way to be like yeah i have this whole thing uh my coworkers know about it but like they're very good i think at like respecting my privacy and not like going to go i mean i'm sure they probably went to go look at it but mm. they don't ask about it you know so yeah i know i've had a a lot of people that i first meet like i somehow get in really deep conversations with people like frequently and a lot of times they'll, hit me me up and they'll be like <laughs> they'll hit me up randomly and they'll be like hey you should start a podcast i really love talking with you and i'll be like okay like i'll think about it even though I have one yeah do the same. like I, I don't ever like share even with people that I, I talk to and like have super deep conversations with I mm. just don't tell them about like any of it yeah because you don't um, want it to be about that because then all of a mm-hmm. sudden like their perception of you not changes but um they only it see you it would in, change in a way yeah I would say it right and it not not necessarily bad or good you never know it depends on the mm-hmm. person um but they're guy I actually started dating he followed my podcast page first and internally I was like I was like why'd you do that one I was like really I was like you should have like you should have followed my personal page because that's like more normal that's like yeah but the fact that like I had to like mentally go oh my god I'm not myself on my podcast page even clued me in like further that I was like oh I'm not being myself but at the same time like I think when I took a break, I told him, I was like, okay, I'm taking a break. I'm not posting on there anymore. And I was like, just go follow my personal page. And I felt this like a <laughs> huge weight of relief. Yeah. I was like, oh, thank God. I was like, now you don't have to like hear about like dark things all the time. Cause like you don't want someone you're first getting to know or like dating or even just in the talking stages. You, you don't want them to know all those like really deep personal things about you too quickly. Mm-hmm. You know, you want to take your time into that. Like, I don't want mm-hmm. someone, like, the first time they meet me to be like, oh, shit, you have, like, a really dark past. Like, okay, well, that's not. My family tells me my emotions are always on my face. So if I don't like someone, you know. Like, mm-hmm. as introverted as I am, if I'm not, if the situation is not something I like or I'm pissed off or I'm mad, or I just don't like someone, I can't fake it. I'm just not no, that person. I feel that. <laughs> yeah. I feel like, I don't think I could see you though. Like you're, but I don't know, because I don't know you well, well enough, but you seem like such a nice, sweet guy that like, I don't, if someone like was around you that you didn't like, I feel like you'd have a decent poker face about it at least. I would still reply to people, but it would be more, um, definitely straight face, but it would be more like, you're asking me a question. I'll be like, yeah, that's good. Yep. <laughs> like, I can't, like, I can't really hide it. Um, My personality is, like, if I don't like you especially, I'm very, or even if I, like, know you and I'm close to you, 
Hmm. I'm going to be honest no matter what, even though not in a way of like, I'm brutally honest, except me as I am. I'm a like complete asshole, but it's more like <laughs> I'm going to be empathetically you. straightforward yeah. with you. Um, and then it's just the more that I don't like you, it's kind of just more straightforward, mm. a little less empathy and everything. But <laughs> that's at least better than what yeah. I would do. I was at our Christmas party last night. One of our this like we had like this one gentleman there, and he made like the most ridiculous comment ever. And I had everything inside me, and I had again tequila in my body. Mm. Um, and I was like a couple sips in. And this guy he goes, he goes, did you wake up at like two in the morning to put all that makeup on your face? And I was like, I'm sorry, excuse me. I woke up 30 minutes ago. Thank you very much. I look this good all the time. What the? I was like so mad. I was yeah. like, who says <laughs> that to a woman? I was like, that is not something you say. But I, I definitely am one of those like brutally honest, direct people um but not like tear you apart like I'll just say things and sometimes people will be like did you really just say that I'm like what do you I'm like it's uh, you want me to lie to you I don't know I don't, I don't understand <laughs> but yeah, yeah no one thing I'm I'm actually really happy about at least with my personality is I can come up with things super super quick so if you say something I'm automatically not just like tearing you apart but it's like yeah. I can say something back to you almost instantly that's and... actually cool. I like that you can do that. I think like I admire people who can do that, but to, mm -hmm. but do it in a respectful way where yeah. they just like shut you up and you're like, yeah, sometimes I, I can't think of it. But um, for the most part, like if somebody says something, it'll always pop up like one thing mm -hmm. and I have to get it out because it's like you have to know that what you said was kind of stupid. Yeah, I think. Well, not enough people, I think, speak up. If someone says something a little like out of pocket and disrespectful, mm -hmm. I don't know why that is. Um, I think I think people are still largely scared of like if they speak their truth and they say that something's bugged them, that it's confrontation and it's going to lead to an argument. It's not like mm -hmm. you're allowed to like tell someone, hey, that's not OK. Yeah. Um, in your own way. Right. Obviously, respectfully. Well, I appreciate you for having me. Yeah, of course. I mean. I always enjoy talking to you because we always have such like deep intellectual conversations. Mm -hmm. And I feel like anything that we talk about, um, kind of we inspire the other person in some way. And then it, it yeah. always ends up being something good. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. I appreciate you. Of course. I appreciate you too. Thank you for coming on. Thank you so much for listening. And remember, you have to go through the eye of the storm to see the clear horizon ahead. Thanks so much, guys, and I'll see you next week.